Competition Commission recently released information on the construction industry's anti-competitive behavior as well as fast-track settlement for companies who were party to the collusion. More than 70 companies with projects worth over close to 29 million rand have been implicated to date. Now joining me in studio to give us their views on collusion within the construction industry is Ronnie Koza, the CEO, Construction Industry Development Board, Opa Bodibe, Manager Advocacy and Stakeholder Relations at the Competition Commission and Laura Granville, thank Associate you. Dennis Rates. All right, thank you so much for all of you uh, to be here today. Let's start off with you, uh, Ronnie, and, and perhaps taking a step back and saying what is going on historically in South Africa as a whole and also why uh, the construction industry is so vastly implicated in price collusion. Well, to find the exact reasons uh, would mean we have to go into research, find out exactly how things happened. But the brief background that I could give is that uh, for a period of almost two decades, the construction industry was under pressure. The investment in the industry was on a decline. Um, just after the ushering in of the new democracy, uh, it was predicted that the industry would have a boom again. And it did happen. We've seen the stadia, we've seen the airports. and the how train and other projects that um, have actually um, led to the buoyancy of the, the construction industry. So one could actually infer that um, because the prices were suppressed, uh, as soon as there was a boom, uh, people may have got tempted to do what was, um, or what could be described as untoward. But we need to get the numbers, we need to know the extent of the problem. Um, I wonder if uh, it is possible that um, a particular uh, group CEO would actually say this is our policy to get involved in anti-competitive mm -hmm. behavior. So it might be people at a lower level that um, are expected to meet their targets that may be doing this. It could be the owner managers that may be trying to sustain their companies through um, such behavior. It's a position that the CIDP is against and we want to promote uh, um, um, less corruption in the industry would never stop it altogether but it's a mission that uh, the CRDP is on to make sure that the industry gets rid of uh, Well, Opa, from corruption. the Competition Commission's uh, perspective as well, I mean, we have had 150 markers at this point in time allocated to you, so you do have cases, you do have things to work with, and it seems that most construction companies are coming to the party and saying, this is what's going on. We also hear news that uh, construction companies had something called the party, where they would sit and discuss various uh, projects and then allocate tenders to each other. Give us an indication of where we stand right now. Well, we have, as you say, about 65 cases. And just uh, as a matter of emphasis, it's at all the levels, even the CEO. Mm -hmm. So, for example, the party is a meeting of CEOs and MDs. It's not just there. Uh, Do you have proof to back yeah, that yeah, up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not about just bad guys at the bottom there acting willy-nilly without any kind of mandate. Uh, so that's the first thing that I'd like to, to, to indicate. Secondly, I think... What we're trying to do is that we've realized that we've done investigations in construction materials, and now we're looking at construction projects. Uh, <coughs> but we think that it's not going to be possible to investigate all the contracts uh, in the last few years. And that's why we, we, we're incentivizing firms to come forward, reveal all the information, whether they consider that information to fall be beyond the scope of uh, the Competition Act or the period for which we call prescribed period mm -hmm. and the period where it is prescribed, non-prescribed, so, so that we can have a better understanding of the anti-competitive behavior in the industry. Well, Lara, I mean, let's uh, touch on the com Commission's corporate leniency policy. And this is one of the reasons that most of the construction companies have said, well, we're not going to fight this, we're going to come clean. Is this basically an admission of guilt on the part of the construction industry? Well, that's right. It's an admission of guilt on the part of those firms that have applied mm -hmm. for leniency. And that's the reason why the Commission has been particularly successful in identifying the extent of anti-competitive conduct, particularly in this industry. And these, these cases that the Commission is investigating are, are mostly brought as a result of applications for leniency by firms who come along and say, yes, we are guilty, we did this, here's all the information, how can we help you? Well, what is the counter-argument? Let's, let's look at that first and say, well, these are the reasons, because surely this is going to go to various courts, there's going to be a lot of discussions, and a lot of questions are going to be brought forward by the market and various parties involved and one of the big questions will be why why is there so much collusion mm. in the industry well and what could their argument be from a legal perspective 
Well, from a legal perspective, there's actually not much you can do with a case of collusion because it's what we call in terms of the act of per se prohibition. You can't say, I had a reason for colluding. If you are found to have entered agreements with your competitors in order to fix prices or, or or bid rig, then there's nothing you can do. Once the agreement is proved, you're guilty of contravening the mm -hmm. act. So there's no excuse. Well, well, Ronnie, let's delve into some of the reasons as to why. Some, I mean, we, we chatted to um, Avenge CEO Roger Jardine a short while ago. He has been very vocal about things. And one of the questions we did pose to him was, did this collusion inflate prices? But some of the sense that we're getting from the construction ind industry as a whole is that they were trying to save jobs. Uh, margins are relatively uh, pressurized because of the cyclical nature of the industry as you uh, yourself and of course Opa alluded to a little earlier. Uh, could you give us an indication as to why this is happening? Do you think they were trying to save the industry or do you think they were trying to make money? Well, there could be various reasons. Um, uh, uh, one of the reasons would be, for instance, the sustainability of their companies. As you know, CEOs have to drive uh, the margins uh, very hard. They have to make profits for, uh, for a profit for the um, for, for the shareholders, and therefore, it would first and foremost be sustainability. It would uh, thereafter be the best performance uh, that uh, either that CEO or that particular construction company would actually uh, give uh, to, this, to the shareholders. But there, there are people who are corrupt by nature, and I think we need to deal with that. Uh, corruption is very broad, and anti-competitive behavior cannot be separated from, from corruption. And I think uh, we should actually applaud those that are coming forward and want to declare what they've done um, mm -hmm. that is wrong. And I believe that it's only after that that we'll know the truth. At this stage, it's very difficult to know the results of the research that yeah. has been done. And therefore, our position is that um, we are against uh, this uncompetitive behavior. We have to deal with it as the industry. We're prepared to, uh, to work with the Competition Commission to make sure that uh, we deal with the culprits. But I think until people tell us why they did it, yeah. it would stay difficult for us to say it's exactly this reason or that reason. It's a multitude of reasons. Well, on the, on the market side of things, the construction industry share prices have come under significant pressure, particularly for those that are suspected to be involved as well. Um, Opa, uh, could you give us an indication as to whether prices have been inflated because of the price collusion or do you think that uh, it kept things in check? Is it about saving jobs? <laughs> um, it's I'm trying to give the, op the opposite view, the opposition <laughs> view here, as you can see. It's very hard to sort of, yeah. uh, uh, at this point in time, to say by how much were the prices inflated. But the nature of collusion in the construction industry is not so much about price, or even though it may include price. It's about smoothing uh, the operations and the revenue stream for the firms over time, because as we said, cyclical, lumpy projects, like big and projects. And very close to zero. Yeah. Some of these companies yeah. taking <coughs> projects and with a zero uh, margin. Sure, and then lumpy projects being far and few in between. So what you want to do is to actually ensure that if there's a cake, everybody must have a steak at the table. And that's what the, con the, 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 the bid rigging is about making sure that we don't kill each other. Everybody has a stake in the cake and we will allocate and rotate these contracts. And when it's your turn, you'll get the contract and we'll subcontract to you. So it's that kind of arrangement. But jobs, I think it will be hard to, to, to sustain an argument that says uh, and, uh, collusion was supposedly to protect mm. jobs. Yeah, it's, it's also sort of important to recognize that the Commission has a process called an exemption process. So if you really do have a reason for having contravened these particular provisions of the Act, then you need to go to the Commission in advance and say, these are the reasons why we are thinking about contravening the law. Are those reasons reasonable in the circumstances? The Commission will conduct an investigation to the industry and, for, for instance, look at issues such as job protection, black economic development, and so on. And, um, and if they are justifiable reasons, then you can, you can get an exemption. But you can't break the law and then come back and say, mm. this, these are the reasons we did it. Mm. Well, also, one of the other things, uh, when you look at the other uh, materials that have been implicated in collusion, we're looking at the likes of steel bar installation, pipe uh, uh, pilings uh, construction, uh, we've seen uh, reinforcing steel bars. Uh, there's a whole range of things as well, concrete pipes. It's, it's quite scary to think that there's collusion on the east side of things as well. And I know that Op Opa, when we look at the steel industry in particular, you've also launched a probe into the steel industry. Is it all tied in together? There, are, there is a relationship, but however, the investigations are independent. So we have independent investigations mm -hmm. in terms of uh, 
primary producers, but also we have investigation in terms of the downstream firms that are manufacturing steel products, especially those that are directed to the construction industry, as well as cement and so forth. So we've moved up along the value chain in the construction industry uh, to investigate all these factors. And some of the cases you're actually citing are cases that are actually before the tribunal. And of course they have uh, you know, come to book before this, yeah. uh, this probe, this initial probe as well. Uh, Ronnie, looking at the, the materials that we've just noted here as well, do you think that we can have a construction industry that is clean in South Africa without any collusion. And I, yes. see, I see you sitting with a smile as well, so <laughs> it'll be interesting to, to see what your answer I, is. I think if you consider the practice in the industry um, that you would actually have a, a built environment um, um, professional, uh, an engineer for instance, who would actually be looking after the project on behalf of the client. And uh, the specification of the materials um, would not be regulated while the appointment of the contractor would actually be regulated. In these cases, if we talk about uh, public sector projects, um, they must be done within the confines of the uh, CRDP requirements. But once a contractor is on site, as to who they buy from, it's very difficult to actually um, make sure that that is tight enough. Um, there is a value chain that we need to, to analyze, and I'm happy that uh, they are being analyzed because uh, once I have a deal with a particular supplier or a particular manufacturer, and I could just buy from that manufacturer only, and, uh, and not give others a chance, would actually kill the competition, would end up with um, one or a few suppliers and manufacturers that are providing materials to the industry. Lara, and that's very dangerous. Who's the victim here? I mean, uh, you know, is government the victim, perhaps? I mean, World Cup uh, stadia that was built, and of course these uh, contracts are also implicated in this, the Khao Train project being yeah. one of them as well? Well, the government will be the victim. Any other persons who put out the tenders will be the victim, and ultimately the consumer is the victim. And more importantly, the competitive structure is the victim, because what the Commission is really trying to do here is create a clean slate for this industry in which collusion is so prevalent. And they're giving companies an opportunity to kind of build a, com a competitive industry from beginning again. So. And Opa, I think one of the questions that has been posed to you, when you do get uh, the fines, uh, what do you do with that money? Where is it allocated? Does it go back to the victims? Unfortunately, it doesn't come to us. It goes to the National Revenue <laughs> Fund and the Minister of Finance <laughs> decides and hopefully that will be pumped back into, into infrastructure well, we can have a, we can have a debate as the society as to what to do with these fines because they're going to be massive funds. Yeah. Uh, we can guarantee that. And secondly, what we're going to do with some of the settlement, can we talk about settlement in kinds? Mm. Can we talk about dedicating particular portions of the fines to something else? Or can the industry itself, as a show of goodwill, do certain things to make up for, you know, uh, for the wrongdoing when that is actually established? Mm. I, I would actually request that uh, the money gets plowed back into the industry to clean it up. Yeah and also to make c certain improvements uh, in the industry. Mm. That would help. Well, you know, Ronnie, do you think that all the companies are, that have uh, you know, been implicated in this are going to come, uh, come to the fore? Uh, we've only seen really the big names come up and say, well, this is what we have been busy with. And also just your view in terms of, do you think that the smaller guys were forced to embark on price collusion just to secure some of the pie? Well, I, I, I don't think people could be forced. I think there are two sides to um, uh, corruption. There is the corrupter and the corruptee. Uh, you can't be forced into corruption if you still have a conscience. But I think if we analyze it carefully, there is um, what we would call vertical corruption, where the main contractor has actually won a project and says, each time I win a project, I'll actually work with you. Uh, the subcontractor. There's also a group of uh, subcontractors who could be competing among themselves and therefore getting involved in anti-competitive behavior. But I think uh, all the parties are guilty to the same extent. Uh, and it's the principle, it's not the quantum that is involved. And I think that's, that, that's what the Commission should actually be well, finding um, out and telling us. Well, Opa, could you give us an indication of how many companies have come to the fore thus far? Has there been any new names brought to book? Well, unfortunately, some of the information at this point is confidential. But as we've revealed in the statement, the big three, uh, some of the big firms, uh, Maran, Robert, Grenaica, and Group 5 have come forward. But uh, I can assure you that uh, we've got information implicating many firms. Mm. in the industry. And Laura, just to end off, I'm giving you the last word from you know, the legal side of things. 
Well, um, I think that it's clear that the Commission does have a lot of information. They speak of 150 markers, so it's important for all firms in the construction industry to ta undertake a thorough audit, they should interview their employees, they should look at their contracts, they should look at their tenders and make sure that their plates are clean. Otherwise, they should take up this opportunity because it is a very good invitation for them to come forward.